think I've always been drawn to places that people see as extreme, that uh, people see as dangerous, perhaps in some way. Uh, edge places. I think that those are the places that life is most vivid and interesting. I need some um, help. I need a 10 uh, 1950 uh, pen points. Well, thank you so much. I grew up in a household where I was lucky enough to see art not as like some airy thing, but as the way that my mother put food on the table. It was an utterly practical trade. I'm not going to get aqua oil color, even though I think it'll make my stuff good because I'm, I'm not that much of a hoarder. I've never used this before. I'm not going to, oh God, I want it. Any way that I could um, you know, make a living or just even make enough money for coffee uh, by drawing, I've done that. So it was a trade, it was an obsession, it was a love, it was a means of making friends. It was my entire means of coping with the world. my sketchbook the way that a photojournalist uses their camera. I wanted to use it to soak up the world and soak up history in the same way. The image has become cheap. It's not special anymore. Um, any moment in history from the uh, most sublime to the most like bloody to the most ridiculous and horrible is probably on phone camera. Drawings are still kind of rare and when you draw something you're investing it with um, a very obvious um, human touch and a very obvious perspective and a very obvious amount of time. And it's like a way of saying, like, look, look at this. This is important. <laughs> Occupy was a moment where, that sort of demanded that everyone take a side in it. And I thought, my God, I should, I should take part in this too, and I'm an artist, that's what I do. So I'll do art about Occupy and I'll do art for Occupy. My first drawings at Occupy were just of protesters. I drew uh, construction guys holding signs, old ladies. Uh, my, my favorite, uh, sort of my most famous poster from Occupy was of a woman with her hair in a bandana and she's like striking a match. And it was a double play on the word strike. It also had the black cats that stand for wildcat strikes. This poster was everywhere. I mean, for years, I would see it on the streets. I mean, this, this, was, this, this was so, it was just so real. It was like art, real, engaged in life, real there, not like stuck off in this stupid white world gallery, not, you know, isolated, but art, like right in the streets. I loved it. Yeah, Occupy changed my life. Occupy changed my life. We artists, we're in this very interesting place, I think, uh, for doing journalism. On one hand, uh, people like to be drawn. Almost all people, uh, in my experience, they, they really like it. You know, getting drawn is something that you do recreationally on vacation. There's a guy in the street that does it. It's, like, it's something that, you know, is special and nice to people. But on the other hand, it's not a threat. It's not uh, going to be used as legal proof against anyone. Uh, your drawings are just seen as like little drawings. There is no punishment at Guantanamo, which is why we will constantly correct you on they're not prisoners and this isn't a prison. Guantanamo is one of the most visually censored places on earth. It, I can't even imagine the frustration it is to be a photographer there. Uh, there's this very elaborate uh, set of um, security rules, OPSEC, that will dictate things like you can't have anyone's heads in a photo or you can't have camera in a photo, you can't have a certain um, number of doors in a photo, you can't have a certain number of buildings in a photo, till before you know it, your camera is pointed at the floor. <laughs> and um, as an artist, I, I could draw around that censorship. This is the force feeding chair. At that time, a um, hundred of the prisoners, or over a hundred, Two-thirds uh, were on hunger strike against indefinite detention, and uh, dozens of them were being force-fed. 
I, I wasn't allowed to draw soldiers' faces. They said it was for their security. And so I drew this sort of mask. It's like a smiley face, but there's no smile. It's just neutral, just like machine parts. We're living in the world that has been shaped by 9-11 and shaped by America's response to 9-11. All of, or so many of the giant cataclysmic events I thought we're seeing now are actually in many ways after ripples of the war on terror, of the invasion of Iraq, of the um, security culture and the junking of civil rights that 9-11 led to. Rebel's actually really hard to draw, to be honest. It's um because it's abstract. I mean, that's actually, I think, one of the most disturbing things about looking very closely at it, is you can see sort of what was the part of the normal life and then like where that breaks down into sort of the abstract horror. I mean, one of the collaborations I'm most proud of, um, which I'm doing a book with now, is a collaboration with a young Syrian journalist, Marwan Hisham. And uh, Marwan, at the time, was in Raqqa, which is his hometown that ISIS invaded. And he sent me cell phone photos of life, you know, daily life in Raqqa. In a lot of ways, my collaboration with Marwan was about showing things that you can't see otherwise. Um, there are no photojournalists allowed inside Raqqa. Anyone doing journalism there is doing an intense risk to their life. It shows uh, the censorship that ISIS is doing to photography in Raqqa. Uh, they consider any drawing that's hung upon the wall or any photo that has someone's face to be idolatry. So this is a men's clothing shop and they, they blocked out the guys' faces. I remember when he first um, sent them to me, it was like looking through another person's eyes, you know? They were like this window. It was like something that I wasn't supposed to see. And... When I do journalism, what compels me is usually people who are perhaps in a role where the world is quite oppressive to them, but um, they're fighters and they're fighting back against that. Pens are not mightier than swords. Uh, they're not mightier than predator drones. Uh, you can tell the pens aren't mightier than swords because uh, typically in um, totalitarian regimes, the artists get slaughtered pretty fast or else get shut up. But even if I don't think that art is a good weapon, it's the only weapon I have, right? <laughs> 